Hi, it's Greg Harrell here, and today I'm going to be talking about a feature in Vim called the Tabloid. Uh, so I think a way to start is just by looking at what it looks like. So let's open a couple files, like I've got a change log, let's open a contributing file, let's open maybe one more, that one. So here we have three files open. We have uh, change log, contributing, and license. And you can see that I can move between them uh, with GT, goes to the next tab, and, and G Shift T will go back the other direction. Um, I can also shift between them by clicking on the tab line. And in practice, I tend not to really pay much attention to the tab line, but uh, I recently discovered that you can customize the way it looks. And, and in fact, what you're seeing here is a customized version. Um, and I've customized it using the so-called tab line setting here, which you can read about in the help. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on exactly how to set this up, um, but I will point to an example um, that I have from my dot files when I learned about this, you can see that I set up this uh, function here to define what the tab line should look like. Um, and the idea of this one is that it be simpler and have less clutter than the default. Um, and so if you were interested in an example, you could look at this and figure out what you want your tab line to look like. Um, the other thing is there are plugins that you can use that can customize the tab line, but I generally prefer not to install a plugin for something that I can do with just like a few lines of config, because um, at the end of the day, I don't need like a huge amount of configuration options. I just need to specify this is what it should look like. Um, and so in this case, it's like 20 lines of MRC and it seems better than installing a plugin. Um, and I also think on the Vim Wiki, there's probably a few examples of, of things that you can do with a tab line. Doubtless there's stuff on Stack Overflow as well. So just throwing that out there, as a resource that you, know, you could look at that if you wanted to uh, configure your own tab line in a special way. But what I want to do now is just show the differences between the tab line that I've configured and what you get with a normal uh, Vim tab line out of the box. Um, so if I do set tab line ampersand, it's going to reset tab line to its default value, which as you can see here is just the empty string. Um, and I can't remember whether I've mentioned this or not, but it's also detailed in here uh, in the help what the tab line setting does. So this instance that I've got down here is just the default. So let's see uh, what the tab line looks like in this one. I'm gonna open the same files again. What did I have contributing? And I also had license. Um, so at first glance, they look pretty much the same. And obviously the key bindings still work the same and clicking still works the same, but there are a couple of differences. Uh, one is that the default tab line has this little X widget over here, which is to close the current tab, which I didn't even know existed, <laughs> even after using Vim for like many years, but it turns out that yes, I can click on that X and it will blow away the current tab. Now that's the kind of thing that I would only click on by accident, so I figured it's clutter, I may as well get rid of it. So you'll notice that up here, there's no X. Um, the other thing that the default one has that I don't really want because I consider it to be clutter is the window count. So for example, if I split this view here a couple of times, you'll see that this tab has three panes in it, and that little number three there indicates that there are three windows um, in it. And if I were to do the same here, split that one, now we have two windows in this one, and three in that one. Um, that is not gonna be the case with my custom tab line. Once again, I just consider this to be kind of clutter. When I'm not looking at a given tab, I don't really care how many things it's got in it. Um, so that was just another way uh, to simplify the, the appearance of the tab line. Um, and finally, one, pretty well hidden feature in the tab line that I never use and I only accidentally discovered today actually as I was just clicking around to like verify that the tab line worked the way I think it does is that when you double click on an entry you actually create a new tab um, and this will happen both in the default and, and my custom one but just say I double click on contributing here you see that it created a new tab for me um, and the same thing's going to happen down here created a new tab um, one notable difference here is that in the no name case it, it, it prints that for an unnamed buffer and, and in this case it just shows the directory um, where the unnamed buffer resides. So that's the tab line. Um, have fun configuring it if that's your the kind of thing that gets you going. Um, and that's all I got for you today but I'll be back with more in the future so subscribe if you want to find out about more of this kind of stuff.